Have you ever wondered why something as soft and bendable as gold is still one of the most critical materials in modern electronics? We usually think of gold as a symbol of luxury, used for jewelry, coins, or even extravagant decorations. But behind your smartphone screen, inside your laptop, and even in your car's onboard computer, there's a hidden network of tiny gold connections doing some very heavy lifting. And here's the twist. Gold isn't even the hardest or strongest metal out there. In fact, it's really soft. So why gold remains crucial in electronics despite its softness? Let's break it down right here on History of Simple Things. Gold might seem out of place in electronics. It's soft enough to dent with your fingernail, and it's more expensive than most industrial materials. But when it comes to conductivity, reliability, and resistance to corrosion, gold isn't just good, it's practically unbeatable. See, gold plays a silent but vital role in making sure your devices function flawlessly. It's used in circuit boards, connectors, relay contacts, and even the wires inside semiconductors. The amounts are often tiny, sometimes even microscopic, but their impact is massive. You might think, isn't softness a disadvantage? Wouldn't a soft metal break, bend, or wear out too quickly in precision electronics? Here's the thing. Gold softness is actually part of its magic. Because it's so malleable, gold can be shaped into extremely thin wires and layers, thinner than a strand of human hair. That makes it perfect for tiny, delicate connections in microchips or processors. These parts need precision, not brute strength. Plus, since it doesn't crack or flake easily, it stays consistent in form, even under thermal stress or vibration. That's especially important in things like spacecraft, satellites, and military tech, where even the smallest failure can be catastrophic. Let's compare gold to other common metals used in electronics. Copper, for example, is cheaper and also a great conductor of electricity. In fact, copper is often used in power cables and printed circuit boards. But copper has one major downside. It oxidizes. That greenish-blue patina you see on old copper? That's oxidation and it can disrupt electrical signals. Silver is actually better than gold when it comes to conductivity. But silver tarnishes, which creates resistance and makes it unreliable for long-term or high-precision use. Gold, on the other hand, never rusts, never tarnishes, and stays electrically stable over time. That makes it perfect for connections that need to be trusted, like those in your phone's SIM card tray, your computer's CPU, or even in high-frequency radio systems. Corrosion might sound like a boring detail, but it's a killer in electronics. Think about this. Every time you plug in a charger, insert a memory card or snap a battery into place, tiny metal contacts are brushing against each other. If those contact points corrode or degrade even a little, it can cause signal loss, overheating, or even a total failure of the device. That's why gold is often used to coat connectors and contact points. Just a thin layer, sometimes only a few microns thick, is enough to keep corrosion at bay, and it lasts for decades. So next time you wonder why your old phone still turns on after years in a drawer, you can probably thank a little gold hiding inside it. So where exactly does all this gold go? Inside your smartphone, for example, gold is used in connectors, microchips, camera sensors, and circuit board plating. In computers, it's in RAM sticks, processors, and hard drives. Medical devices like pacemakers or hearing aids rely on gold for its biocompatibility and stable signal transmission.
And get this, even your car likely has gold in it. Modern vehicles are packed with electronics for navigation, sensors, safety systems, and infotainment. Many of these rely on tiny gold-plated connectors to ensure stable performance in all conditions, from freezing cold to sweltering heat. Of course, gold isn't used just because it performs well. It's also about long-term reliability. In high-stakes environments like aerospace or critical medical equipment, there's no room for guesswork. Engineers need materials that will work the same way every time, without failing after a few years. Gold stability and resistance to environmental wear make it an ideal candidate for these applications. It's not just about making things work, it's about making sure they keep working. Now let's talk about cost. You might be wondering, if gold is so expensive, why not replace it altogether? The answer is, engineers are trying, and in many cases, they do. In low-cost electronics, gold might be replaced with cheaper alloys or coatings. But for high-end, high-performance systems, nothing really compares. The good news is, you don't need much. Even a full smartphone only contains about 0.034 grams of gold. That's worth just a few dollars, but multiply that across billions of devices and suddenly the demand becomes enormous. This tiny but crucial usage helps keep the gold market stable. It's not just jewelry that drives demand, it's your devices. Here's something that might surprise you. Gold is highly recyclable, and electronics are now one of the fastest growing sources of reclaimed gold. Old smartphones, broken computers, and discarded electronics what we often call e-waste, are filled with tiny amounts of gold. And when collected in bulk, these trace amounts add up quickly. So in a way, yesterday's junk gadgets could become tomorrow's treasure trove. So the next time you unlock your phone, stream a video or charge your laptop, just remember, there's a tiny sliver of soft, shiny gold making that all possible. Its softness might seem like a weakness, but in the world of electronics, it's part of what makes it so special. Gold doesn't rust, it doesn't flake, and it delivers electricity exactly where it's needed every time. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.